Hi, I'm Steve. I'd like to welcome you to this video. For this particular video, what I've done is I've taken a series of typical progressions that occur over and over again in country and country rock music. And for them, I've written several solo courses of solos through each one, demonstrating techniques and devices that I like to use in my playing. And we're going to show you all those. But before we do, before we get started, let's get tuned up. Here we go. Here's an E or six string. What I've done is I've taken a four bar progression. G seventh for a bar, C seventh for a bar, D seventh for a bar, and then back to G seventh for a bar in a typical country two beat or fast polka. And I've written several three courses, I believe three or four over, over this progression demonstrating fast single note lines. So let's play it for you and then we'll see if we can't break it down and show you what I was doing. If we could tip the band, please. <laughs> Okay, so let's take that one course at a time, even smaller than that, let's take that one lick at a time. For the first course, I start here in the second position, and let me play what I played for the first course, and then we'll break it down. One, two, one, two, three. Okay, so you can see that that first chorus takes place all within the second position, second and third position. So I'm starting on the D string here with an upstroke. Now just watch closely. I think the best way for you to learn this is... Okay, there I'm shifting from B flat to B natural with a slide. Okay, that's all in the third position now. Then, for the four chord, or C7th, I move down to the open position, starting with a B flat. Then a slide, and down to C. Then for the D, I'm walking down on the fourth string from G. Okay, and then a slide, you can see that. F to F sharp, third finger. Then D to D flat. And a big stretch up to F natural. Okay, then I just finish with a G lick out of a basic G chord. Okay, now let's play it at a reduced tempo so you can play along. One and two and three, four. Moving on to the second chorus, I shift up to the seventh position, and here's what I played without the music. One, two, three, four. So you can see the second chorus is in two positions, the seventh and the twelfth. Starting first, I'm going to start on D, P play, then play open E, and a slide. Now watch closely. Chromatic, C, and then chromatic back up to C, and slide from E flat to E, so I'm in the eighth position now, G to A, then I'm going to slide backwards now from E flat to 
to D and then back to C. Okay? Then I shift up to the 12th position and I start with a slide chromatically from B flat up to D. Rock my pinky over to catch the high G. Right out of a major pentatonic scale. And I end with a G country lick. Finally at the 12th fret. Here is the whole thing intact at a reduced tempo. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Notice I'm alternate picking, strictly. Okay. The third chorus, I'm starting in the 10th position. Now let me play that chorus again without the band. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, S slowly. One, and two, and three, and four, and. C, important. Another important move, B flat to B, E, D, B flat to A. Okay. Chromatic, open D, slide, then chromatic down to C, right at the four chord. Alternate picking. For the five chord, I'm going to start with a slide. Let me do that solely. Okay. Let's play the whole chorus at a reduced tempo. One, and two, and three, and four, and... And for the fourth chorus, I'm moving up here in the 15th position. And I'm starting with a bend, half step bend. And back down to the 15th fret, 17th to the 15th on the second string. And I do that same thing again. Then I do the same thing a third time without the bend. So I get this. And it sounds like. And as you remember, the second court, the second lick that I played was exactly the same as the first. However, I drop now this note down a half step to this note and play the same lick with a half step bend in there. Actually, no, because it's in, you want to make this sound like a C seventh lick, you might want to bend that note up a whole step so you bend to the root. And everything else remains exactly the same. Third time again without the bend. Now, to make that lick sound like a D seventh, move that finger down, the top note down again, one note, same lick, and again, bend a whole step, or a half step, either one works, and then end on G. Let's play that section now at a reduced tempo, one, and two, and three, and four, and... And there you have the entire section on fast single note lines. And this next section, we'll call it 
for lack of a better word, we call it open string scales or open string ideas. Now, first of all, what are open string ideas? Well, using, using a, a lick on the guitar, employing open strings instead of all fretted notes. Now, this is one of the, my pet techniques that I really like to use, especially in, in country rock music, because most of the tunes are written in sharp keys as opposed to flat keys. And if we start it with the key of C and go right around the circle of fifths, we find that in the key of C, the six strings of the, of the guitar are all diatonic, meaning that they're all extracted from the C scale. So conceivably, in the key of C, you could use all six strings open. And you, moving right around to the key of G, the same thing occurs. All six strings are diatonic. So you could conceivably play anything in the key of G using any and all your open strings. The key of D, the same thing. Then when you move over to the key of A, you start getting blue notes. And what I mean by blue notes are notes out of the minor pentatonic or blues scale. Specifically, the G natural note on the G open third string will give you a, get the, the flat seven. I'll, I'll, I'll show you some ideas in this that I like. As soon as we get through this, a little more. Then we get to the key of E and we get even more blue notes. We get the flat three and the flat seven. And then after you get around to more to, to the to the key of B and F sharp, then you start losing the effect. The, uh, the open strings are no longer effective. Now, let me start demonstrating how this technique works by starting with a C scale here. Now, I'm going to right here in the fifth position, just play a typical C scale. Here we go. Now, if I utilize open strings in this scale wherever diatonically possible, check this out, you get a whole different texture. With all six strings still ringing after the after the scale's been having played, okay. So, okay. Now let's describe exactly what's happening here. Well, I'm starting on the top string, playing the top three notes of a C scale, C B A. Then I go down to the second string, play B and a G and F. Now my next logical choice would be E on the second string, but I want to use open strings. So I'm going to go back to the first string and play an open E string. While I'm keeping the F ringing against the E string to get that texture, then I'm going to play D and C, and now I'm going to play the B as an open string because it's available to me. Now I have three strings ringing, continuing down A on the fourth string, open G. Now watch my right hand here. When I go back up, to play an open string, I'm using the middle finger of my right hand. All the rest of the notes are picked. Now, continuing down, I'm going to use my second or third fingers to slide from F to E on the fifth string. And then D, I will play open with my middle finger of my right hand. And then finally finishing up with C. By the way, that gives you a C major 9 chord. I like that chord. We can do the same technique using the G major scale. And I'll start this one. I'll do this one ascending. I'm going to start on the sixth string. This is also appearing at the bottom of your screen. I'm going to start at the sixth string, play G. Now, I'm going to use what I call, for this technique, a banjo roll technique. Now, for you, those of you who don't know what a banjo roll is, it's using my pick middle and ring fingers of my right hand on consecutive sets of three strings. Now I'll show you when this occurs. I'm going to start with a G on the sixth string, followed by an open A, which I'm going to play with my middle finger. Two strings ringing simultaneously. Then I'm going to go up with my pinky and play at the seventh fret B. C on the fifth string with a big stretch and then open D. Now here's where this banjo roll technique comes into play. I'm going to play the sixth string with my pick, the fifth string with my middle finger, and the fourth string with my ring finger. That way I can have three strings ringing simultaneously, and that gives me this sound. Continuing, I'm going to play the E, which is the next note of the scale, on the fifth string with my pinky, and with my pick of my right hand, and another banjo roll, playing F sharp on the fourth string with my middle finger right hand, and then open G with my ring finger. Another forward banjo roll, and that gives me the full one octave G scale. 
Here's what it sounds like. I like that sound. And the second octave gets a little trickier. I'm going to start the second note of the scale being A with my pinky. Notice that. Then I'm going to reach up with the, my ring finger of my right hand and play an open B. And then come, come back with my middle finger and play the C on the third string. So I'm skipping a string. Hammering on from there to D, from C to D with my third finger. And I'm going to do that same technique again, reaching up, playing the open E string with my ring finger. And I'm going to come down to the second string with my pick and play F sharp. And then another big stretch here with my index finger, reach up and play G. And let me show you what that whole thing sounds like intact. And a nice, so that's a nice little ending, ending technique I like to use for an ending of a song that ends in G. I would just play something like this. And what I've done is I've taken that G, the ending of the scale, and slid my first finger up, putting an A on top, which gives me a G major 9 chord. And then I reach down with my finger and tap G. Just one of my pet little things that I do. Anyway. Let's do the D scale now. We'll do one more scale, and I'll, then we'll, we'll show how this works in context. So starting with the D scale, again, I'll do this one ascending, just to show you how it works. I'm going to start with a slide from F sharp to G on the sixth string. First finger. And now this banjo roll technique will come into play again. Watch. Open A. OK, notice I'm not starting on the root, because it only goes down to E, the guitar. So starting with the third. Then, the next note being B, I'm going to come back to the 6th string, play B on the 7th fret on the 5th, 6th string, C sharp on the 5th string, and open D, and again, using my banjo roll, B, C sharp, and D, pick, middle, ring. Continuing on, I'm going to play E then, the next note, on the fifth string with my pinky, F sharp on the fourth string, and G as an open string. And again, that forward banjo roll, pick middle ring, E, F sharp, G. Next note being A, which I'm going to grab with my pinky, skipping a string and playing open B, coming back to the third string and playing C sharp, and then reaching way up to the, to the third fret of the second string to play D. Now watch my right hand here. I'm playing pick, ring, pick, middle. Now that's subjective. That's, if you want to do that, that's fine. If you don't, that's just my, the way I do it. And descending. Voila. Now we're going to tip the band and see what happens with some open string licks. Here we go. Okay, let's take a look at that first chorus of open string licks, this time played without the background music so you can see exactly what I did. Then we'll break it down. Here's what happened. One, two, three, four.
Now, as you watch me play through those four licks, you will see certain things happening throughout all of them that are common to all of them. And that is the kind of cas descending cascading effect. Now, the way I'm creating that is I'm using, if you look at my right hand here, I'm using a combination of my pick and middle finger. And what I'm doing is for all the times that I play an open string, I'm reaching up with my middle finger and grabbing that so all the notes aren't just played with my pick. And here's the way I played that first E lick. Watch my right hand on this. One, two, three, four. So you can see I'm using a variety of fingers on this one. Now, let me describe it here while you're watching my right hand. I'm starting off with a pull-off from E to C sharp. And I'm coming to the second string, playing that with my pick, and then playing the first string with my ring, middle finger. Then I use a forward banjo roll, pick, middle, ring, across strings three, two, and one, G, G sharp, and E. Then I'm going to go down and play another forward banjo roll, starting on the fourth string, skipping the third string, playing C sharp, open B, and open E. And then finally finishing with a slide from G to G sharp, and then open E with my ring finger. And that's the technique, just alternating between my pick and middle finger. Now let's go back and I'll show you what I did with the A seventh chord. I started with an A six triad here. And I'm going to start with that same cascading effect, playing A, F sharp, open E, back to F sharp, down to G natural, back to F sharp, and again to open E. Then I'm going to cascade the rest of the way down in this manner. Watch my left hand. slide from C to C sharp, open D, another slide from C to C sharp, and then open A. Okay? That's the A seventh lick. Now the same effect takes place over the D seventh chord, starting here in the fifth position. Again, we don't need to look at my right hand because we know what I'm doing. Watch my left hand. Three and four. Let me play it first. Three and four and... Here we go, slowly. Three and four and. Open E. Okay, right there, a trick. Using my pick to slide from F to F sharp, ring finger for open G back to the fifth string with a pick, and then open D with my middle finger. And again, same thing twice. You play the same like twice. Now, the last chord of that progression was a G seventh, or G, and here's a lick I played over that one. Again, you'll see that walking up the ladder effect, as I call it, cascading. Three, four. Six strings ringing at the end of the lick. Now, one thing, as before I go on, look at my left hand here. You'll notice I'm keeping my fingers perpendicular to the strings. Okay, you don't want to flop your fingers down across the strings like this, because then you're not going to get the proper effect of the strings ringing against one another. You want to keep your fingers pretty perpendicular. So no finger touches another string as it's playing. Okay, that way you can keep the strings ringing. Okay, now here's what's happening. Watch slowly here. Seventh position. Three and four and. Walking up the ladder. Open A and that gives you time to shift down and play the G. Okay? Here's the entire solo intact at a bit of a reduced speed. One, two, three, four. D 
27th. G. Okay? Now, let's look at the second chorus. For this one, I've still kept the open string idea, but I'm going to play a different type of a different type of technique, this time only staying on the top two strings. Starting, let me play the whole second chorus for you first intact. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you can hear that the common thread hinging all these licks together is again the open E string because it's common to all four chords in the progression. That's why I've chosen to use it. So for starters here, I'm going to bend a G to G sharp and I'm going to hold it there. And against that note, I'm going to play an open E string pulled off to from B, C sharp, and D. Now, watch me do it. Watch my left hand first. One, two, three, four. Now, watch my right hand. I'm using my pick on the second string and my index finger on the first string. Watch. One, two, three, four. Okay, important things to remember for this idea. You're keeping that G natural bent up to G sharp. When you get it up there, you have to make sure it's in tune and hold it there. The other thing is, make sure that you're pulling off with enough force so that you get the sound of the open string in there. And the third thing to remember is that that bend from G to G sharp has a time value. It's a time value of an eighth note. So it's like one, two, three, four, and one. Okay? Just, don't just go. It has an actual time value. Now, the same concept will continue through the A seventh chord, but this time, all I need to do to capture the sound of an A seventh, changing it from an E seventh, is to drop that G sharp down to G natural, the same lick. And here's what that one sounds like. A matter of fact, I'll continue into it from E so you hear what it sounds like. One, two, three, four. And the third chord being D seventh, I have to move down to the fifth position, starting with F sharp on the second string and A on the top string. My open string will still be E. My alternating notes on top will be A, B, and this time C natural. And here's what that like sounds like. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm starting with a slide actually from F to F sharp. And then continuing on three and four and And the fourth chord of that progression being G, I'm going to start with B, G and B. Top two strings, and notice my fingering, second and third fingering. That leaves my, pink, my pinky free to play the C on top, my index finger free to play the A on the bottom in between the open E strings. And that one, I'm going to start like this. Three and four and... Well, let me play it up the tempo. Three, four and... the end, I have the G and the A ringing together. Slowly. Three and four and. Okay. Now let's do this. Let's go back and play the entire second chorus intact at a reduced tempo. So you can hear what it sounds like in context. Here we go. One, two, Three, four. Okay, 
And now, for the third and last chorus, what I've done is I've taken an, a technique. It's an, it's an age-old country guitar technique, and it's a forward banjo roll, right off the banjo, a la James Burton or any number of people. You've heard probably this one. This lick's been recorded a hundred times, probably. And here it is. Here's what I played for the third chorus, and then we'll break it down. One, two, three, four... Okay, now let's slow that way down. I know that was a little bit brisk. So what I'm doing here is, first of all, let's look at my left hand. I'm going to start the chord being E seventh with an E seventh triad, D, G sharp, and open E again. The open string being E for all three chords. And then I'm going to I'm going to start with a hammer on twice from C sharp to D with my pick. Then I'm going to go up and play the high string. We'll get to my right hand in a minute. And then roll across strings, three, two, and one. D, G sharp, and E. That's what it looks like from a left-hand standpoint. Now let's look at it from a right-hand standpoint. Okay. My pick is going to play all the notes on the third string. My middle finger plays all the notes on the second string. My ring finger plays all the open E's or notes on the first string. And here's what it looks like from a right hand standpoint. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's the technique for the E seventh, A seventh, and D seventh chords. Now let's go back to my left hand and watch that all I have to do. Check this out. To change that E7th to an A7th, all I have to do is move the same lick that I just played down a half step. Okay, and I play everything else remains exactly the same. To change that lick then to an D7th sound, all you do is move it down again a half step and play the same thing. four times to cover two bars. Now the G lick is a little bit different. The G lick is what I did. Here's what I did for that. Three, four. Okay. Then I'm going to use an open G pulling off from from ascending notes on the third string to the open G to ascending notes on the fourth string. Now the best way for you to learn this, believe it or not, is to just watch what I'm doing really slowly rather than for me to go through a tedious explanation. Here we go. One, two, three, and four, and... One, two, three, four... And for this segment, I've taken a 12-bar blues progression, a shuffle, one of my favorites, a boogie shuffle, which we're all asked to play quite often. And I've written uh, three or four courses of some ideas that I like to use against the boogie shuffle. So let's play it first, and then we'll break it down. Tip the band, please. Let's go.
Okay? So I was pretty much, the first two courses, I was improvising that. But the third, fourth, and fifth courses are the courses I'm going to show you. The first course, I'm going to use triads coupled with an open string. Now, of course, being in the key of E, I think it's only fair that we start with an E seventh triad first. And here's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm leading with my index, with my middle finger of my right hand with an open G string. That's my first note. Okay, then I'm going to come back. Notice I lift my second finger off the third string. Come back and play a G sharp on the fourth string. Then I'm going to replace my second finger on the B and then with my middle and ring fingers of my right hand play B and D together. And then I use my middle finger to pull off to that open G again to get it to sound without actually playing it. And then you get that a flow going, kind of a round robin thing going with that, with that technique. Now, I'll do it slowly here. That's the best way for you to learn this, I think. One, two, one, two, three, four. See? Okay, so I'm going to play that over the E chord. Then when I get to the A seventh chord, I'm going to just move it down to create an A dominant triad, and that's going to be with pinky on G and index finger barred across the second fret A and C sharp. Now I'm going to again lead with that open G string. And to get that, I'm just going to back, I mean, how can I describe this? I'm going to roll my index finger back a little bit so it's off of the third string, allowing me to hit that open G. And I'm going to hit the fretted G on the fourth string. So I have unison notes. And then I'm going to put my finger back down on A and C sharp and again snap them like two rubber bands. And I get a round going that way. And I'm using my index finger to pull back. Kind of, you can see my finger sliding along the string here until it slides off of it and then it makes it sound by pull off. Okay. Now, for the B seventh chord, I'm just going to take that same A seventh and what do you know? Move it up two frets. Okay. Same thing. Going to lead off with an open G. Come back to A. Now this might sound a little dissonant at first, but when you get it rolling, it sounds fine. Come back to the A with my pick, and then put my first finger down and play B and D sharp. Fourth fret. And then again, roll my first finger across that B, pulling off to the open G. And I get that roll going. Okay? Now. Let's play the whole thing together real slow. Play along if you know it. If not, just learn it. One, two, and three, and four, and. Again. A. Back to E. seventh back to E okay let's get to the second chorus now first before we get started let me play it for you and then we'll break it down one two a uh, one two three four So, now, the first thing you can see, well, the first thing you can't see, actually, good segue, look at my right hand. What I'm doing here, and you might have noticed this, is I'm not actually strumming these chords with my pick. My pick has somewhere disappeared, and here's what happens, and I think a lot of guys do this. My pick is suddenly being slid down, and I'm kind of palming it between my palm and the, and the, and the first knuckle of my middle finger, my right hand, and that frees four fingers up to kind of pluck the chord rather than strum it. And that way you get four notes playing simultaneously rather than kind of a 
arpeggiated effect. The chord I'm using is a 13 chord. Just watch the fingering. And then E on top. On the inside, four strings. Five, four, three, and two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that around, harmonizing the blues scale as my top note. So, what I'm doing in this case is this. I'm going one, two, three, four. Okay, with that note on top. Then when I get to the A chord, I'm doing, the, I'm doing something completely different. I'm up here in the 10th position. And the lick is this. One, two, a one, two, three, four. This is a lick a friend of mine showed me that I incorporated all the time. I'll do it slowly. Three and four and By the way, you can move that around over any of the chords in the blues scale. And the same idea still works. So, when we get back to E, I'm going to play the same thing down in the fifth position. Same chord voicings. Now, when I get to the B, as you'll see, I change the voicing to a B9 chord. I'll just describe that. D sharp, A, C sharp, and F sharp. Then I'm going to play, slide that up to half step to play C9. Back to B9, E13. Then I kind of flip my pinky up to catch F sharp by itself. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Now, for the third chorus, I go more into a, to a country vein and more of a double stops idea, a la Albert Lee or somebody like that. And here's what I played. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Now, first of all, I'm starting down here. Open position. Hammer on. Then, I'm going to bend a D up to E. Now, notice I'm supporting the bend with my second finger because it's tough to bend down there. And G sharp on top. So I, oh, also. I bend that D up to E and then stop it with my, th with my thumb on my right hand. I don't want everything to be ringing. And I'm going to shift up to the fifth position, do the same thing, bending F sharp up to G sharp. Then hit B, I'll hit B on top. Then hit B again, and then release the G sharp back down to F sharp. And then E. Then I go up a minor third and do the same thing over E blues scale. Okay, bending A up to B, D on top, then reverse the process, D first, release the bend back down to G. Then the tricky part, I... Okay, I'm going to get G sharp with my pinky, then bend the D up to E, pushing it underneath the fourth string before you actually play it. Then hitting B on the fourth string and then bending the D back up to E with my index finger and then playing G sharp. And that like sounds like this. Okay? Then for the A lick, here's what I played. One, two, one, two, three, four. For this one, right hand pick is playing the fifth string. Middle and ring fingers are playing all the other notes. I'm starting with the A, and that's going to be the note that I'm interspersing between all the other 
double stops that I'm bending. Starting with my pinky on C sharp, bending a G up to A underneath it. I'm hitting the open A first. Hitting the open A again. Okay? It's better just to watch, I think, what I'm doing rather than me describe it. You'll get it a lot faster. Okay? And notice when I'm hitting the open A. That's important. It kind of makes the thing punctuate a little bit better. Double stops, E and A. Bending, double stops, D and F sharp. Bend them both at the same time. Just bend them up. Doesn't matter, just bend them a little bit. Release them back to the original pitch. C and E, and then down to A. And that's the A lick. Slowly and together. Three and four and. Okay. Now the next lick, returning back to E, I played. Okay, now that's just double stopped country lick, starting with a bar. And again, using my pick on string four, my middle and ring fingers on strings two and three when I'm playing two and three, and one and two when I'm playing one and two. Now, when I get to the B seventh chord, I'm going to play diatonic sixth intervals descending in the key of E. And here's what that lick sounded like. One, two, one, two, three. Okay, and I'm leading into the lowest note of each sixth interval from a whole step below. And I'm playing chromatically. So my, no my notes are... And what I'm doing is I'm going to be playing all the notes on the third string with my pick, all the notes on the top string with my middle finger. Then the last lick of the thing... Okay, that's a nice little staccato punctuation kind of lick. Okay, there's sweeping and all kinds of stuff going on here. Here's what's happening. I'm starting with, again, my uh, middle and ring fingers sliding into B and D. Then I'm going to play with, with my pick on the fourth string, G and E. You must play that. Don't pull off. Then I'm going to switch positions to A and C sharp. Okay? And I'm just, again, I'm playing that with my middle and ring fingers. Okay, then I'm going to play G and B and hammer on to G sharp. So if you can't see that, look closely. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bar across strings three, four, and five at the second fret, my middle finger, and drag my pick across backwards. Oh, I'll sweep picking. Okay. And then when I get to the fifth string, I'm going to pull off from B to A. Okay. And I just finish like that. And I play this at the end, which is my favorite blues ending chord. Now, I don't, here's what that chord is. E, D, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, and B flat. It's an E, 13, sharp 11. Okay? And here's what I played. One, two, a one, two, three, four. concludes that section. This section I think we'll call just hot licks. We have no musical backup for this one. These are just some of the pet licks that I use, some of my favorite ones. They just feel good to me. I just enjoy playing them. The first one is, is this. I'll play it for you first. I'll describe what I'm doing. I'll play it over like a G blues. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, I, 
I just like that one. It's a rolling effect. And what I'm doing from a left-hand standpoint, in the key of G, by the way, barring across the 12th fret, G, D, and F. And I'm playing the third string with my pick, and then pulling off, playing strings two and one together, D and F, pulling off from F to E, so I have the E and the D ringing against one another. And I just get that going in a round. It's the chord. Okay, if I want to move that down to C, I'll just move it down to the fifth fret. Back up to G. And down to D. Okay, that's one of my favorites. Here's another one in the key of E, or any key that I happen to like. It's just one of my favorites, ending tunes or whatever. Ending, ending little tags at the end of a tune. Here it is, one, two, three, four. We'll see it again. Okay, here it is slowly. Starting on B, first string. One, and two, and three, and four. Okay, let's do a little faster. One and two and three and four and... Now here's the, the third one, third and final, hot leg, as it were, in the key of G, another one of my favorite keys, and let's see, here's what this one sounds like, one, let's see, we'll, we'll put it in context here, we'll put it at the end of a tune, one, two, three, that just feels good, anyway, here's what that one is. Second half. Okay, that starts with a slide. One, two, a one, two, three, four. Okay. Three of my favorites. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our video. I hope you've gotten a lot out of it and learned a lot. But the main thing is to have fun. That's what we're all doing this for. Before we sign off here, I'd like to thank Martine Mayo for helping me with this. I'd like to thank Keith Wyatt. And I'd like to thank Nancy Trailer for my wonderful bolos that she's making here. And uh, we're just going to play for a little while. If we could tip the band again, let's get going here. <laughs>